Yes. Wait, there's a snake. Wait. Oh, I got him. Got him, guys. He is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Have a look at that. Oh, his mouth is open. Oh, you gotta try to bite me. There you go. Get your teeth out of there, bud. All right. Have a look at that weird little fish. Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and tonight we're going to be out here looking for some animals. Not sure what's going to be out tonight, but Louisiana has all sorts of awesome nocturnal animals, and I'm hoping to show you guys some of them tonight. Let's go. This area is home to lots of different creatures that are pretty hard to spot during the day. With the warmer weather and the bit of rain that we got recently, this will have a lot of different animals moving around tonight. This is a musk turtle. He's digging away. Doesn't look like a stink pot. Oh, okay. I think it's a little loggerhead. Have a look at that. Oh, his mouth is open. This is a little loggerhead musk turtle. Not a very pretty one. Nice flat top. This is not a very common musk turtle I find out here. Mostly what you're going to get is stink pots or common musk turtles. These get a lot bigger, and as their name suggests, they get a huge head. Now look at his little mouth there. He's opening it like a snapping turtle. Oh, he's going to try to bite me. Now, I wouldn't want to get bit. They do have a pretty decent bite, but nothing like a snapping turtle. And another way you can tell that these aren't a snapping turtle is because they don't have that long tail. Musk turtles don't have a full shell that covers their whole body, and uh, mostly they rely on that musk, that kind of bad smell, to deter predators because they don't taste very good whatsoever. This can be a very pretty species of turtle, but this one is not that pretty. He's got a little white chin, and they've got little webbed feet for digging along. A lot of turtles will swim to the top, and uh, most of the time they just sit by the edge eating algae, and then kind of just crawl along the bottom. So they're a really interesting turtle. All right, go go ahead and let this little guy go. Here you go, bud. Back into the water. All right, there's a little water snake down here. He just took off into the water. Have a look at that. Turn my headlamp off. Play. Have a look at this. It's a little diamondback water snake. Very cute little snake. We filmed these guys in the past and they get really big. In fact, they grow to be one of the largest water snake species even out here. Light green color, got some really cool specklings on him. Now, diamondback water snakes look very similar to green water snakes. However, green water snakes don't kind of have that chain pattern on the back. And that's another name for this snake species is actually the chain water snake. Very cool species. They oftentimes get confused for rattlesnakes because they get really big and they're a heavy bodied snake. He's not trying to bite me, although he did try to bite me when I first pulled him out the water. It's a cool species, super common around here, and it definitely is a very, very interesting water snake. They mostly eat fish, they'll sometimes eat tadpoles, crawfish, and frogs, and uh, a lot of other things will eat them. Little egrets will spear them and eat them, snapping turtles will sometimes grab them while they're swimming. And even other snakes, a bigger water snake, a water moccasin, or even a king snake would eat one of these guys. And in fact, I'd have to guess that one of these amphiumas, which are these huge salamanders that live along these ditches, I'd have to guess that one of those would try and grab this little guy as well. So a lot of different things would eat this species of snake. Really cool little guy. I'm going to go ahead and put him back. All right, we'll go ahead and let this little guy go. There you go, little buddy. Boop, boop, boop. All right, nice. Oh, wait, there's a snake. Oh, I got him. Got him, got him. There you go. I saw him dive down there. He's gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Yep, that's what that is. Well, have a look at this. That is actually a baby broad-banded water snake. He is gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Bright, bright red. This is probably the prettiest broad-banded water snake I've ever seen. He's got some really cool belly patterns. He's got lines on his face, too. Now this could, I could be completely wrong about this, but this could actually be a mix. Some water snake species can actually mix, and uh, some have actually been seen down in South Florida that are mixes of uh, marsh snakes and broad-banded water snakes. But I kind of think that this is a Midland broad-banded cross. I'm still going to call this a broad-banded because it definitely is, but he's got some really cool colors on it. Look at that, bright orange. This is a pretty snake. He dove down right there. 
Water snakes' first reactions when they see people coming is to normally take off into the water and he dove into the grass and normally I can reach down and grab them just before they get away. Now they're definitely out tonight. In the springtime, you're going to have lots of these little guys coming out. Now this would have to be last year's baby, but uh, water snakes give birth to live young sometime around late spring to early summertime period. So that would make him not, not a full year old yet, but uh, he's going to make one year sometime this spring or summer. But he is beautiful. Doesn't have those red eyes like the last water snake that we found. And uh, he's got a little bit of checkering on his belly, but not too much. Very interesting pattern. I've never seen one this pretty. And uh, he is absolutely beautiful. So we're going to get some shots of him, and then uh, we're going to go let him on his way. All right, let's see you, little guy. Oh, oh, there he is. Where can I get him? Get him with my hands. Yeah. Dang it. I almost never see sirens here. That's a, I can't get him without a net. Man, that's a bummer. As much as I like catching things by hand, many times it is better to use a net. Not just because it's easier, but also because some of the animals that we find can give a pretty nasty bite or stick. All right, so now I've got this little net with me, and anything I can see along here that I couldn't normally grab I can use the scoop net to get because a second ago I absolutely failed my job and missed that siren. That was the first siren I've seen in a very long time. It's a really cool salamander species. And if I see another one, I don't want to miss the chance to get it because they're really cool. There's also lots of amphiumas along here, which we've shown you guys in the past. And uh, if I do want to show you guys another one of those, or if I see a special looking one, then uh, I can nab it in the net. I can also get all kinds of different fish and aquatic bugs with this that I wouldn't normally want to grab, like a water scorpion, or uh, maybe like a catfish or a gar, because those are things I normally wouldn't want to grab by hand straight out of this little puddle. A little water scorpion. Here you go, I don't see these too often. Saw them come right up to the top. Here we go. You need to be careful with this little guy, because he can definitely bite me. Have a look at this little guy. This is actually a water scorpion. Now this species is related to another called the toe biter. Same thing, it's basically a water scorpion. They're in the same family. And they don't really all have common names. The toe biter is a nickname given to the really, really big water scorpions. And this one is what I call a stick, a water stick scorpion basically. As you can see, it looks like a walking stick. And it's got these two little mandibles out front that work a lot like a scorpion's little pinchers. So they grab things like a little fish, they'll grab it and pull it to their mouth. And they've got one giant tooth in the front of their head. And that's why I want to avoid that head. Now a lot of people look at this and they actually think that's a stinger, that little tail right there. And that's actually a snorkel. They actually use that to breathe. So what they'll do is they'll sit up like this at a little angle and that's how they get their oxygen. And uh, that's no problem whatsoever that's not a stinger but I definitely wouldn't want to get my hand by his mouth these don't bite people very often so I'm not actually sure uh, how the venom affects people too much I know it's nothing super dangerous but I know it definitely definitely hurts these guys hunt little fish small bugs pretty much anything that they can get their hands on and uh, they're a pretty common species however I don't see them too often while I'm going out with a net out here so it's pretty cool to show you guys all right see what we'll do I don't know if you can see this release, but there he goes. It's a little gar. I almost lost him. Here we go. It's a little baby gar fish. There you go. Get your teeth out of there, bud. All right. Have a look at that weird little fish. Get my headlight off. This is a baby spotted gar. Look at that. Really cool looking fish. I don't catch these in nets too often. They're really cool fish. They're a bony, bony fish, and uh, they have fused scales. So their scales are actually really tough. It's like a big bone plating across their head, and they've got really sharp teeth. Gar are actually a really, really cool predator little fish, and they'll eat anything that they can get. Crustaceans, fish, whoop, it's all right, little buddy. Now a study recently showed that uh, in one of our bigger lakes here, these guys' cousin, the alligator gar, as well as spotted and long nose gar, mostly feed on crustaceans like crabs, and in here they'd be feeding on stuff like crawfish and little shrimp and stuff. Look at that little nose. Now along that mouth, I don't want to like 
poke and prod around his mouth because if he swings it, he's going to slice my finger open because they've got super sharp teeth. Super sharp. Now, they're more like needles rather than like an alligator, so they're not going to go and bite down on anything. But if he swings his head, it's going to poke into me. Now, I can actually keep this fish out of the water for a long period of time because they can actually breathe air, which is pretty cool. And what you'll oftentimes see these guys do is come up and gulp air, and that's to control their buoyancy because they don't have a swim bladder like other fish. They have to they have to actually bring in air from an outside source. Really cool fish. Oh, see that right there? See how he lifted his head and gulped air? That's what they'll normally do, but he can actually breathe the air, which is really cool. Now their teeth are made specifically for their prey rather than actually biting, and a lot of people think that these guys can be pretty dangerous. Now there have actually been a couple of recorded bites, but most of them were by accident. Now those little needle teeth don't tear into anything like a person very well. They would just bite you and let you go if they did anything. But if he swings his head, he could actually slice into me. So it's a very, very cool little predator fish. Oftentimes people will keep these guys in aquariums, and uh, they're a pretty common thing to see. And I'm really glad we're getting to show you guys one of these fish. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. Alright, let's go ahead and let this little guy go.